Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Now recently I was scrolling on Instagram, you know, as you do far too often in quarantine. <laughs> and I stumbled upon these corset tops. <laughs> now, can I be real a second for just a millisecond? These aren't corsets. Now, repeat after me. Lacing does not a corset make, and nor does steel boning. Also, if we're being really critical, the shape of these is more inspired by historical stays, so really it should be called a historically inspired stay fashion corset crop top thing, but really it's just a lace-up top. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> criticalness aside, I liked these because, like I said, they kind of look like a historically inspired stay, and I love history bounding, so I thought, let's make a corset crop top lace-up bodice thing today. <laughs> now, if you are interested in corsets, I have an entire series on everything you need to know to make a corset, an underbust corset, from start to finish, as well as all of the materials you need to know. I will link that up in the card, so be sure to watch that. Now, before we jump into it, you will also need to watch my corset drafting tutorial because that will give you the basis uh, of how to draft this garment going forward. If you just watch this video, you might get a little lost, so be sure to go watch that. I'll link that up in the cards as well. Now, before we jump into it, let me do a quick little shameless plug. Hit that subscribe button and the like button so you can get notified for more videos. Also, my Instagram, my TikTok, my Facebook, my website. <laughs> Alright guys, let us put the hair up and get started. Um, also, this is Lola for those of you new here. She is the noisy little brat in the back of my videos, but we love her nonetheless. Say hi Lola. Oh, of course now you're quiet. <laughs> Alright guys, let's jump into it. I started with my basic corset measurements and made the half body corset drafting grid, which you can learn how to make in my corset making series linked in the cards. Make sure you watch that drafting part of the series, otherwise you may get lost during the following. I made my half body grid using my widest circumference, my bust in this case, and then marked my overbust, bust, underbust, and waist horizontal measurements. as well as my vertical measurement from overbust to waist. Then I found my side seam and marked it by measuring my half bust measurement. Remember to use the halves of these measurements because we're only drafting for half the body. From there, I measured between the apex of the chest, you know, the nip knops, and divided by two, again, because we're only drafting half the body, and marked that on the bust horizontal line and drew an appealing diagonal crossing through the apex down to the point at the center front. Make sure to not let the point get too small, otherwise it will get hard to sew from there. Then I subtracted my other circumferences from my bust to find out how much I needed to reduce each horizontal line. For the waistline, I needed to remove six inches because my bust circumference minus my waist circumference is 36 minus 30, which equals six inches. But remember, we're drafting half the body, therefore I need to only remove half that from my draft. So I removed three inches from the waistline, distributed equally on each side of the side seam and a bit from the side front seam, which for me looked like one inch from each side of the side seam and half an inch from the side front seam. I also needed to take an inch from the overbust, so I took a half inch from each side of the side seam. Once all of those reductions were marked, I connected them with a smooth line using the French curve ruler. I also measured across the upper chest from arm side to arm side, divided this by two and marked this on the overbust line to determine where the arm side needed to start, as well as how far up from the waist the bottom of the arm side can start. Once those two measurements were taken, I used a French curve ruler to draw the arm side in a pleasing curve to the side seam which then followed through to a straight across back. Then I connected the waist to overbust reductions using a French curve ruler once again. Finally, I added a bit of a point on the center front bottom edge by drawing a pleasing curve with the French ruler. Then I cut everything out, added seam allowance, and made a two-layer cotton mock-up. 
It fits surprisingly well, but for anyone more blessed in the chesticle department, you may have some alterations to do. For me, when I wore the garment, I noticed that the waistline crumpled on the side, which means it was too long for my waist. If I had made the final mock-up and boned it, the bones would have poked into my underarms, so I marked the top of the wrinkling while it was on my body and removed the fabric from the mock-up, then transferred that marking to my pattern. I was quite happy with the fit, but I needed to make straps, which I suck at drafting, so I simply pinned extra fabric to the back, pulled it over my shoulder and pinned it down taut, then marked out a pleasing strap shape, as well as where it needed to connect to the base of the bodice, I highly recommend having some help with this as I ended up with some errors while doing it solo. They're not too noticeable to the untrained eye, but I'll explain that later. Once I was happy with the pattern, I transferred it to a medium weight cotton and fused some dull, heavyweight satin to it to add support to the figure. Remember, we drafted half the pattern, so to get the opposite side, just flip your pattern over. Anywhere I planned to add boning, I added a 1 inch seam allowance so that I could encase my boning in the seam allowances, as you'll see. Then I sewed up all of my panels together as they were drafted, sewing right sides together and ironing very well. To make the boning channels by encasing them in the seam allowance, I cut down one side of the seam allowance to less than a quarter of an inch, and then rolled the other seam allowance over to the cut side over its own raw edge, making sure it was just wide enough to fit my synthetic whale boning from Burnley and Trowbridge once it was top stitched down. Then I took the boning I cut from the mock-up, trimmed and sanded it down if needed, and inserted it into the channels. Remember, it needs to be the length of your channels minus your seam allowance. For the back lacing panel, I rolled the raw edge onto itself and created a channel once again by top stitching it down. Then I stitched around the top and bottom edges of the bodice inside the seam allowance so no bones would wiggle out, and attached the straps based on my markings. Looking at the garment, I knew I probably wouldn't wear it if it was strapless, so I decided to bust out my favorite vintage sleeve pattern pack by Simplicity and cut out these lovely bishop sleeves. I finished up the garment by sewing the sleeves up their length, inserting them into the arm side, gathering the arm opening and attaching the band to conceal the raw edges, which I finished with hand stitching to the inside. Finally, I finished the raw edges by folding them to the inside of the garment and whip stitching them to just the inner layer of fabric, making sure no stitching would show on the outside. However, you can also bind the edges in bias tape if you find that easier and want to wash and wear your garment very often. So overall, I'm like really happy with this top. I just think it's so beautiful. I think the neckline is so elegant because I put the straps very much to the outside of the shoulder. I just love the sleeves. They have such a nice drape to them. They do, you know, some nice things for the girls. <laughs> um, however, I was talking earlier about the little trouble that I had with the strap and I'll show you that right now. So if you look here, there is a little bit of a pucker can't let's see it's right right there there's that little pucker this happened because when I draped the strap over my shoulder I drew it to kind of move more towards the spine like a lot of historical gowns from like the 1700s would do because that would help bring back the shoulders however because I then later decided to put a more modern sleeve on what happened is the modern sleeves are meant to fit with an arm side that fits very close to the shoulder. So it would fit, it, the strap would go right here. Oop, wrong finger. The strap would go right along the crux of the arm. Um, and because my strap goes back, now I've got two lines fighting. This strap is pulling the sleeve way back, causing it to pucker. Now, should I fix it? Yes. Will I fix it? Probably not. <laughs> Unfortunately, my bird brain has already moved on to the next project, which is a giant cottage core wardrobe video because apparently I don't have enough clothes to fill my already stuffed wardrobe, but that's a problem for future Nicole. <laughs> so yeah, I will see you guys next week for the big cottage core wardrobe lookbook tutorial thing. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button, as well as that little notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. 
Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your friends as it really helps us grow this community so that I can bring more videos to you guys. Thank you guys so much for letting your hair down with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye!